the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. And that's still something that it's a wait and see because they took that away with Joe. Joe was just, hey, you're going to be a robot in the pocket. We're doing a bunch of screens. We're going to make things very easily. You're not thrown over the field, over the middle of the field anymore. Like we're just we're going to break this down. We're going to be a run, run, run first team. And you can take a couple shots to squirrel down the right hand side where like it's out of harm's way. And if he doesn't come down with it, it's an incompletion. It's fine. I am very curious what Nico does with this wide receiver room because Bruce coming back from a really, really rough injury and he's easily rootable. He's a big time figure. Love brew. But I'm curious what he looks like coming from an injury like that. We saw Dante Thornton did not work out as a transfer guy. So you can't just pencil in Chris Brazel is just going to find immediate success as a receiver on the outside in this offense. And then Chaz Nimrod and Caleb Weber. Okay. They're not great. And then squirrel. He's not Jalen Wright. Like I like squirrel white a lot. He's very reliable. He's going to gobble up the catches in this offense. He takes uh, speaking of guys who takes a lot of shots and he's a, not the biggest guy and he keeps getting up like squirrels taking some yeah. shots and made it through that it just blow my mind. But he's not Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt's a first, like he was a borderline second, third, first round pick. Like he was someone who was just taking the top off and single handedly just destroyed Alabama's uh, secondary. We won the you're not going to see that award. from Squirrel. Like you're not going to see that from Squirrel. Squirrel yeah. doesn't have that upside. He's a number two receiver, I think. He, yeah. He's a guy, he caught 62 passes. And to me, he's either going to catch the quick out, uh, 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 the flanker screen, if, if mm-hmm. you will. Uh, sometimes he'll get a slant. And then he'll he'll go on a, on a go route. So, but mm-hmm. he needs to be the number two guy. Um, I I'm wondering if Dante Thornton he finally looked like he started to get it mm-hmm. to fit in after they moved him from slot to wide receiver, and so maybe he can pick up where he left off. I know he not only touchdown reception he got hurt, mm-hmm. but maybe he he's kind of figuring it out. Maybe the second year of the system will help him. Uh, Brazel actually, according to Pro Football Focus, comes in. Uh, higher rated, I think, than what Thornton was when Thornton mm-hmm. came in here. And and some of this is about attitude. I, I heard that uh, from various folks that Thornton came in and got his NIL money and maybe didn't work as hard as he should have or needed to. Uh, hopefully, uh, when Brazel gets here, he won't have that same approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, and there's another receiver, uh, Mike Matthews, a five-star. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe he fits in. Maybe he comes in and wows them and is able to work into that rotation. Uh, as we As we know, Hyper's rotation at receiver is not very deep. He likes to go with three or four guys, mm-hmm. and that's about it. Uh, so uh, Matthews may be one of those that works it in. I actually did a grade the other day in a column I wrote, Chase, about Nico can only be as good as a supporting cast, and I graded the receivers, the tight ends, the offensive line, and the running backs. I gave the wide receivers the best grade out of that group. Because really? I, yes, because I think they're going to find three or four wide receivers that are going to be really productive for them. Look, not as good as Hyatt, not as good as Tillman. I get that. But I think they're going to be really solid at receiver. I'm, I feel confident about that group. I am still waiting to see. I am not quite there yet. I would like to be wrong. I just, it's a wait and see. I don't want to get burned on this again. I don't want to get burned on the, I just don't know if they haven't, they still don't really have a, like Brew is fine. Brew is just not a traditional number one. And I think that's the difference. It's like Cedric Tillman, you could throw the ball 25 times at Pitt and he can go and win you yeah. a football game. Like that was, he was a different kind of playmaker on the outside. Brew is not that guy. You can't target Brew 20 times to go get you a win. Like you don't really have that go to receiver. And maybe Chris Brazel turns out to be that guy. Um, you mentioned Mike Matthews putting a lot of pressure on him as a true freshman. But I think he's someone who's going to need to be on the field sooner or later because of also the threat of the portal. Like he's going to need to play like you're going to need to get Mike Matthews factored in here um, sooner rather than later to uh, I mean, just see what you have there. And also just like the talent, like you've got to give these guys some some opportunities here um, unless you're Tim Banks and Willie Martinez on the defensive well, here's uh, a, backside. Here's the thing. And and um, I don't mean to be too critical of Joe Milton because I, I mm. thought Look, they won eight games with him. He had several really good games. He didn't fit the system. But I also think that uh, the receivers will show out more with Nico at quarterback. I Mm. think they would have looked better if Hendon Hooker had been the quarterback. I think there were receivers at times that were running open and Milton just didn't see them. So I think – now, here's the other part of of what I was saying too. If you don't think the receiver group is the best group on offense to help Nico, what would it be? I would say offensive line if Hurd's in the boat because I think well, he's not in the boat though. 
But when I it, wrote this, he wasn't in yeah. the boat. Okay, if he's on the okay. boat, then I probably still lean running back. Just because right. they re like Jalen Wright, not a traditional number one, but you were able to still just not miss a beat, whether it was Wright, whether it was Samson, whether it was small. I just think Tennessee's always gonna be able to run the football um with this scheme and with what they're doing because they just push these guys out wide, the receivers out wide. They the box is always gonna be light with them on first and second down. Mm -hmm you have more talent and more getaway talent in Dylan Sampson, just the kind of big home run threat that we've seen flashes of. It's now his show. And then I think Cam Selden is just such a potential jump up from what you've had in Jabari Small, who's good. Jabari Small has been solid as a number two guy to come in there. But I think the opportunity for Cam Selden, who has just been billed as a physical freak coming in here and just the four-star running back who... I mean, the Cordero Patterson stuff was immediate with him because he yeah. played everything at, in Virginia. I just think when I think about this running back room and what Tennessee has been able to prove on the field over three years, I think they're going to be able to run the football. And I think there's going to be more big play heavy hitters in the running back room this year. All right, let me ask you this. Uh, did you see Dylan Sampson in pass protection against Iowa? Oh, no, it was bad. Yeah, no, like I... That's part Cam of Selden might back. be running back one by week three just to protect yeah, that, that, Nico's that's, blind side. That, that's, that's part of my running back. Now, if Sampson is a ball carrying receiver, mm. I love it. His pass protection is awful. Uh, and I, I like Selden's upside too, but I also believe you got to have three running backs. Yeah. So who's your third running back? I don't know. Yeah. So that, that concerns a little bit. Uh, maybe it's Keith. Uh, maybe it's Peyton Lewis who's coming yeah. in. I, I don't know who that other one is, but I think you need three. That's why I gave the receivers a slightly better grade than the running backs. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. But would you agree if Hurd is in the boat officially? Would you like if you're writing that column now, if Hurd's in the boat, is that the, the number one for you? It would be close because uh, I still think you got to fill that left guard spot. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think you have to have five competent offensive linemen because they work as a unit. If you got one really bad weak weak link up there, mm -hmm. I, I think that can hurt the productivity of an offensive line. So I would I would still want to see who that left guard is. Okay. Uh, final one for you, Josh Heupel. Through three years, what grade would you give his tenure? Because I was asked about this on uh, Locked On Balls. Uh, last week and I got a B I gave a B plus and I'm Go. nicely done nephew the Chase Thomas podcast <laughs> hell yeah